everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we are talking about house painting. I showed a bit of an update earlier in the week about house painting and redoing this house but I didn't really get into the basics of the whys and the hows of house painting. When you are working on a house you don't want to just start right in scraping all bad and come back around later on and do the painting because there's lots of pitfalls that you can avoid with some pro tips that I've learned. We have a neighbor just down the road that is a professional painter. He has helped me in the past with like taping off windows and doing things like that, giving me any extra tools that I needed as far as paint spraying. I'm doing this all by brush stroking. It is a one and a half story house, so it is a Cape Cod. Um, they call it a one and a half story because you can't stand straight up fully upstairs. There's not like seven feet of clearance because of the angles of the roof line. So, that being said, a lot of this work can be done from the ground level or with a six foot step ladder. Now, I am almost six feet tall, so I can reach quite a ways up without getting out in an extension ladder. You do want to keep in mind any safety and hazards of falling off of ladders, falling off of roofs and things like that. Use tethers, use harnesses, whatever you are most comfortable with. One of the best things I ever learned about when I did the tall, tall part of this house on the other side, I was way up at the peak, on a ladder where here I'm able to stand on a roof and reach the peak. It's a lot higher when you're up there. They have wings or expansion wings for your step ladder and you can add that for about $40 so that your ladder can't tip one way or another. It's going to hold steady against whatever surface it is propped up against. So we're going to go ahead and get started and I'll talk to you about tools, brush strokes, paint and primer. So one of the great pitfalls to avoid is having a gallon of paint to spill. This little handy cup, they call it the handy paint cup, sells for about $4 at any paint supply place. You can also get them at like your local uh, hardware store. They even have knockoff cheap ones at dollar stores. So I'm just going to show you real quick. This is my paint. Now you might not know it, but look at that color difference. This paint has been sitting in the sun and it has been fading and it more or less looks a gray green. Well, over time, these are going to change. They're going to fade. They're exposed to the weather and the elements. Sun, wind, snow. So in Michigan, in our northern climate, those weather changes can be very, very extreme. So when you're wanting to go to Pick out your paint. If you are color matching, you want to keep in mind any fading that may have occurred. Now, if you're like me, I didn't use up all my paint. I took my paint coat to the store. I also put some fresh paint with my leftover on a stir stick and had them color match it and then color match it again. The clerk actually had to recalibrate her machine to get the right color because it was turning out way, way lighter. Now the pitfall to avoid is just taking a paint chip off of your house and going and having it color match because it's going to be different on each side of your house depending on if it is north or south facing, even east or west, whether it's getting full sun all day long or lots of shade. So you can see here, I'm painting the whole house. I'm not just painting the primer sections. The reason I'm doing that is because over time, your paint is slowly breaking down from those UV rays. So the other thing is, you can see the color difference here between this and this. You are never going to get an exact match on that color fading when you're going overall over the whole house. So we're recoating the whole house in a repaint or an overspray if you were to use a sprayer. This way, I'm really working it into any areas that might be loose. You wanna make sure that you're going upwards and getting that lip of your, of your top board. And make sure you're using long, even brush strokes. So I'll use my short strokes here getting around this eaves trough. We're not taking the eaves trough off because it was already painted. And this is probably 30, 40 year old, or possibly even older, galvanized eavesdrop and downspouts. 
So we're just going ahead and giving it a coat of paint over it because we're not replacing them, we're just getting it on. So another common pitfall that can easily be avoided is going to your home improvement store on a weekend. The full-time employees that work Monday through Friday are not there and you're getting people who work a couple hours a day, a couple of days a week, and maybe they don't have experience, maybe they're just uh, elderly people who are filling their time with a uh, little side job. So the thing that I found when I went is my paint. So I went on a weekend and they could not get me a match on my primer. They said that my primer couldn't be matched to a paint code because it was only allowing two ounces of tint per gallon and six or seven ounces on a five gallon bucket. Well, this dark green paint is the paint that the girl at Home Depot mixed for me seven years ago. I kept it. We knew we'd need to do touch-ups we still had some left over. So I went back to the store a week ago when I was running out of my primer and asked the employee, could she color match my paint instead of the primer that I already had? That was a big no can do. And instead of buying a five gallon bucket of primer and a five gallon of paint, they sold me nothing that day. So I went home and I thought it through and I thought I can buy a one gallon bucket of primer to get me by through my leftover paint. Now when I started painting this house many years ago, there was not paint and primer in one. We also had problem peeling and flaking on our original paint, so I had used the specialty primer. Now with all the high grade and high tech paints, you can get your paint and primer in one and save a lot of money. So that caring employee ended up saving me money in the long run because it it was $145 for the five gallon bucket of primer and $210 for the paint with primer in it. Well, I didn't need paint and primer to go over my paint. I really only needed a gallon or two of primer to get by with my leftover paint. So I thought it through and I bought a gallon of primer for $25. I bought the paint and primer five gallon bucket for I think $165. And I'm in business and I can get the front of the house done. So I'm using up all of my paint and primer separate on the back side of the house, on what I already done on the garage, and on this one side of the house that doesn't get much sun. So we're gonna try out that new technology on the three sides of the house that get the most wear and tear from the weather and see if it outperforms the paint and primer separate over the years.
around with the white trim paint but as you can see it's already made a huge difference just getting that primer covered up and if at all possible when you can I suggest tinting your primer slightly off colored from your primer so that you can see where you've been if you're just doing a touch-up job now in this case I'm doing a total paint over job because of that sun fading and the length of time that this paint has been on the house, you can see it's very, very bad here. This is a bad wood problem. There's going to be lots of siding removal done on this side. We're saving it for last. This side has already been done. We've gone around starting with the garage and the smaller sections of the house before we go up. So that is some of the pitfalls and some of the things to look for in helpful hints of painting your house. So a little bit of prep work goes into every house painting job, and that is scraping any peeling paint. This is a multi-tool, sometimes they're called a three-sided tool, or a five or 11-sided, because there is like a nail puller, a can opener, a brush cleaner, a scraped edge. These are beveled and a little bit sharp for for getting into crevices and corners, and it's very handy to have. This can range anywhere from three to seven dollars, um, and I suggest getting one that is heavy duty. This one won't bend so much where you're getting into the hardwood around the window frames. This size is specifically made for getting around windows, but it's more of a push and pull type where sometimes you need some scraping, and this tool really helps with that because it helps kind of like cut the paint so that you're not getting chunks or feathering around the edges. And I highly, highly suggest working in those small sections, like I said, so that you can go back and prime it. Because if you come back the next day, you might have further feathering that is going to need to be addressed as you go. This is just the same thing as the small one. This is probably a two to two and a half inch square. This is a carbide blade and it is changeable. So I've already wore it down on this side. You flip it over and you can use it on this side. Then you can flip it over again and use this side here and here when it is upside down. Very handy to have. The larger ones have a push and pull knob so that on very hard old siding and chunky paint, you've got that for leverage. It also doubles as a tool for hammering so that you can tack down any loose wood. This is a carbide tip scraper push and pull. Newer version of this. It's a little heavier duty. I like it better um, for some cases. We've already found this just has a two-sided replaceable blade on the edge. And as you can see, it's really hard to get it exactly lined up straight. This is slightly off. And even though it is a carbide blade, we have already split and cracked one of them. No problem, you just flip it over and use the opposite beveled side. The replacement blades for these were $6. The entire tool, I think, was 8 um, These range roughly anywhere from 4 to $7. And these replacement blades here are only 3 dollars to $4.5. And because they are multi-sided, they're really good for that. But there is no beveled edge. It is you know, much more blunt. It's a thinner material. So like as you can see down here on the bottom, it is much more worn so down. So if you don't do a good job of your scraping before you're priming, or if you don't prime at all, you're going to end up coming back and doing this a lot sooner. This last paint lasted roughly five to six years. It's been seven years since it's been totally repainted, and it's definitely overdue. This front side was all done last week. We had a lot of rain that held us off, so we're getting into the front part of the house. Now in anything, you want to check for any holes in the siding, any wetness or rotting, and in any house you might have any wetness with your ease troughs. We'll address that in another video. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start brushing on the paint on this side of the house. Now painting and trimming out your house might be a really big job for you, but it is very, very expensive to have this hire done, and I'd rather do it in my spare time a little at a time and get the same results with that money in my pocket because just the paint alone has already been a $400 expense. So keeping that money saving and frugality in mind, this is the time you want to address any seals on your windows, any caulking, any glazing. On this window, we've got some bad glazing that has to come out before we do any painting on here. So this outer storm window is going to come off so we can do the maintenance on the outside of the house. We've already gone through and done the inside, but as you can see here, this window is having trouble. The missing support brackets up here caused a problem with sagging and so the water ran down inside of this window frame. So you can see we've got a lot of condensation going on right here. That's going to have to come off 
get air dried before we can really get into scraping because if you start scraping or sanding into wet wood you're going to gouge it my kids came and helped me and they had a little trouble here in this wet spot because they didn't know and they went right down to the backer board of the house so this piece has to be cut out and swapped for a new one we also had some water damage here at the bottom where there was wood swelling the original fitting seemed to have shifted right here possibly even the board dropped but it was in contact with this concrete block these are other issues to be watching for pitfalls and tips and advice for you in doing your house this is the next side we're going to be working on jack has started in on it and i will tell you this is the side of the house that we have to start very early in the morning because he's standing here getting a sunburn just as he's working and the sun is over here for the better part of the day this is a starting at 5 a.m. 6 a.m. job and with a neighboring house this close it can be very hard to not disturb your neighbors because they're all around very very close that's a huge tip to have you don't want your neighbors upset while you're trying to rest from recovering from working on your home get even with you well everyone that's it for this video despite 10 or 11 days of rain straight I'm getting a little bit done at a time we went around this breezeway on one day that we had half a day with no rain and then after a few board replacements I'll get back in on that front part of the house so we'll see you next time remember to subscribe hit the like button and hit that notification bell so you'll see the ending video of this house wrap-up job